Hello, everybody. Aloha. Today, I am here to talk to you about building a new economy, an economy that's not built on greed, an economy that it's additive, it's not subtractive, and an economy that has a foundation that's so strong that it can support a durable, shared prosperity for all. What I'm talking about here is building the love economy. The love economy, the word love. Isn't that an awkward and kind of uncomfortable word, love? Especially in the context of business and the economy, it's not a word that we use very often. But what I'm here to do today is to challenge us to reclaim not only the word, but the action and the emotion of love in the context of business and our economy. This is so important for us right now for a number of reasons that I'm going to get into in a few minutes. But I, what I hope to inspire us to do today is to walk out and go back into our work environments, go back into our business environments, and practice leadership with love. I also want us as consumers to go and spend our hard-earned dollars and realize that we've got the power to change an economy with that little dollar that we have in our hand and become conscious consumers and be part of a new movement that's going to transform our current greed economy into something that's far more sustainable and long-lasting. Now, because I am a filmmaker, uh, and because I'm kind of talking about some abstract themes here, I thought it'd be good, and maybe even loving, to share with you the world premiere of my latest film. And it is here, and it is called The Greed Economy Versus The Love Economy. I named it that last night. That's why I had to look at my slide. Kareem? You get the point. That, that's my whole, whole TED talk right there. Thank you very much. No. Uh, so yes, these are, these are Jenga blocks. Who remembers Jenga? Or who plays a Jenga right now? I think everybody plays a Jenga. I love Jenga. There's something about that game that uh, it's so thrilling, isn't it? Like there, There's risk. You, you take that little tower and you make it as tall as you possibly can until it topples. But if we remember, taking a Jenga game out of the box, it actually comes at a very predefined height, doesn't it? And it's very structurally sound. It's just the way the blocks are placed, three by three, crisscross. And it's, it's built in a way that has a lot of structural integrity. But of course, the game is to make that, that tower a lot taller by not bringing in new resources. It's not like there's other blocks that we can bring in to make the tower taller. We actually have to take blocks from the base of the Jenga tower and put it on top. Remember the commercial? You take a block from the bottom, and you put it on top. And then you take a block from the middle, and you put it on top. And what's going to happen is, sure, we're going to build that tower really, really tall, but the structural integrity of that tower is going to be weakened the taller it gets. So this is a great illustration of what I'm talking about today. Today, I see an economy that we live in that I call the greed economy that's built on things that are essentially opposite of love. And what I want to challenge us again today is for all of us to walk out and realize that we, the consumers, we, the business builders, we, the students, we, the entrepreneurs, are the economy. We built an economy, and we helped support an economy based on greed. We could do the exact same thing, but we have to do it quickly. <laughs> Yet another film that I uh, have recently released, as in this morning, um, this is another film that actually shows that not only are we are we compromising the structure, structural integrity of our tower, we've been building it with elements of greed that are not sustainable. <laughs> so that's my daughter, Willow. And Willow does an amazing Macaulay Culkin impersonation. <laughs> Thank you, Willow. That was great. And um, <laughs> Willow demonstrated there exactly what we have done to our economy with that, with that Jenga tower, haven't we? And I, I want us to say we, because it is all of us. We need to be held to account to where our economy is today. And I really feel that if we don't take elements of greed out of the economy and replace them with elements of love, we're going to be seeing a topple that's going to come soon. And I don't say this as, as fear-mongering. I'm just saying this as, as a way for us to wake up and engage and do something about it. And there is some things that we can do about it. But why build a business based on love? 
I think even maybe some people in the room might suggest that the word love and the concept of love is, is something that there's no room for in business or in the economy. Um, some people might feel that love is weak. Expre you know, outward expressions of love in business is a sign of weakness. I want to challenge that and say, no, love is strength. Love is foundational. What about working for companies and organizations that are love-based companies? Why wouldn't you want to work in an environment like that? Is it because we don't want to be vulnerable? We don't want to be vulnerable uh, and open with the people that we work with? If that's the case, I want to challenge that too and say vulnerability is strength as well, especially in this new love economy that I'm describing right now. And what about buying from love, love companies? I like that, love companies. Companies that are based in love. Companies that are actually making profit, not by destroying or detracting, but by giving life to other things, i.e. they're making profits, but they're also honoring the planet and they're also, also honoring people. We call that the triple bottom line. Why not spend our hard-earned dollars on those companies? Maybe we would say it's because it costs too much money. Maybe doing things right is not affordable. But to answer that, I want to switch that around and say, what's going to happen if we keep on continuing to support the greed economy with our dollars, even though it might be a little bit cheaper to do so? Well, are we still going to be shocked? Are we going to continue to be appalled when we see things like child labor, climate change, the destruction of the rainforests, and corporate corruption, again, we are the ones that built this system, and we are the ones that have the ability to change it. Now, I want us to do a quick little exercise. <clears throat> you can shut your eyes if you want. I won't know if you do or don't, because I can't see you right now. I want you to think as quickly as you can. Think of as many corporate brands in your mind, like 5, 10, 15, however many you can put in, that are building their companies based on love. So these might be the companies that are building uh, profits and reinvesting them back into community uh, initiatives. It might be companies that um, understand that their environmental impact needs to be adjusted, so they've they found new sustainable ways to, to produce their product. These might be companies that are just on Earth so they can create uh, meaningful employment for people. OK, you probably have a few in your head right, right now. Let's flip that around, and let's do the same thing for the greed economy. Think about as many of these corporate brands that have been built on greed. These are the ones who have been charged with corruption. These are the ones who have been uh, charged with human rights abuses, et cetera. And again, because I can't really see you, but I'm going to try to do this. By show of hands, how many people could think more on the love economy brands than on the, on the greed? Show of hands, how many people could think more? <laughs> OK, I'm guessing it's not many. How many, show of hands, could think of a whole bunch on the other side, on the greed economy side. Yeah, wow, I'm actually not surprised. <laughs> so this is really a problem that we have to fix right now in 2017. This is something we can't wait for. But I want to question, why is it that we can name so many corporate brands and companies and, and corporations that have done so many bad things in the world and we keep on supporting them? Why is this? I think it's because they've got a story to tell. And to be honest with you, the greed economy is very attractive. Look at the music videos that we watch. Look at the advertisements. Look at the movies that we consume. The whole media machine is based on getting us to accept the fact that the greed economy is legit, and the greed economy is not going to topple. This is what we're consuming. This is what we're putting money into. The thing about the love economy is there's a lot of people that have been working on the outskirts of capitalism trying to create a foundation, but it's quiet. But now it's the time to be bold and to be loud with the things that we're doing that are supporting the love economy. So for me, as a filmmaker and someone who owns a company that is, we pretty much sell storytelling with film, I feel it is our duty as a company who are all committed to the love economy to help share and amplify the stories of those who are doing really amazing things in the love economy. Because guess what? There are a ton, ton of amazing conscious capitalists that are out there right now that are doing wonderful work and essentially taking out the little greed blocks from the greed economy, replacing them with love blocks, and sturdying up that tower in hopes that very soon what we can start doing is dismantling the tower from the top down. Because right now, the top is so heavy that the integrity of the tower is not going to hold it for much longer. So I wanted to share with you, instead of just talking about it, I want to share with you just a few of the stories that we've been capturing around the world of the builders of this new love economy. 
I've got three entrepreneurs, three, three companies that are doing amazing work in the world. And if you don't mind, I'd like to share them with you right now. Colombia, a nation rising up and recovering from the scourge of decades of violence. In the cities, the divide between rich and poor is stark. But the streets pulse with a spirit of hope and change. It's the perfect testing ground for an inspiring new wave of entrepreneurship. Businesses that blend profit with purpose. Street vendors and mom and pop shops are the gatekeepers of what people eat in low income neighborhoods. They sell three quarters of the food in Colombia. We know they're spending around 15 hours per week and around 20% of their income only in transportation to go to the central market. They usually get up around 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning because they're trying to be back at their shop at 7 or 8 to open it. And they spend all day in their shop until they close around 10 or 11 at night. It's a really tough job and that's seven days a week. Grupo works to save the vendors time and money. Shop owners text orders to Verena. At dawn, she and her driver hit the market, stuffing their little truck with sacks of plantains, onions, and potatoes. Today, Carolina and Verena have plantains and onions for Carlos. He has fewer trips to the central market because of a Grupo. Plus, he gets lower prices and better quality. If we think about sort of strategically what does a grupo want to be, it's an ally of those shop owners. It's like a good friend that helps them grow their business that has their interest in mind and not the opposite. Part of the love economy is being good friends, isn't it? And the really cool thing about this film uh, that we shot with Agora Partners is the other shop owners were telling us on camera how much more time they have now instead of waking up at 3 in the morning to get all the produce to their shops. They've got more time to spend with their kids, more time to spend in their community. Imagine that, building a business not just to make profit, but building a business to increase the quality of the life of their customers and everybody around. That's a perfect example of what's happening in the social enterprise world in Colombia. The next film is my friends at A to Z Wine Works in Oregon. A to Z Wine Works not only are producing some of the finest Pinot Noir wine that you can find in North America, they're also producing real measurable positive impact. They've designed their company to be an agent of positive change. And for that, they've been creating an extremely sustainable experience for their employees. At A to Z Wine Works, we aim to produce the highest quality wine for the greatest sustainable value while building a business that's a force for good. Being a force for good is something that we just think about every day in everything that we do. That good has to be for all of the people we work with, for our community, and for our staff. One of the important measures of our success is if our staff members are thriving, growing, expanding their opportunities and developing more skills if their families and they are healthy and happy. We work with intention. We believe that purpose drives transformation and that's important to our company. At the end of a great day at A to Z, what I feel best about is walking around hearing people wrapping up their days, and just looking at the landscape and understanding that we're part of a real, tangible place where we're growing things and making great wine. And A to Z is an example of a very large company. This isn't just a small social enterprise. This is a highly profitable company that have been winning awards based on positive social impact. The last video clip I want to show you is also in the alcohol world. Yes, I do love wine and beer. Uh, this is Bose Brewery out of Ontario. And Bose is a B Corp brewery, and they do make fantastic beer. But what's really notable about them is they care about their employees so much that just last year, they gave ownership completely to the employees. What a radical concept in the love economy. This is uh, totally against what we thought capitalism was all about, about increasing the value for shareholders and shareholders only. This is a distributed wealth approach, which is yet another block of the, of the Jenga love economy. Bose Brewery is a prime example of a new economy company. Since opening nine years ago, Bose has experienced rocketing sales in the crowded craft beer market. 
most of our customers start their relationship with us because they like the beer. But there's that moment where they turn from being customers into fans, and that's usually when they find out something really wonderful about us. Oh, it's organic. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, and you guys supported this charity that I really believe in. Oh, that's really cool. And oh, you're doing that initiative for the environment. It explains why we can grow by over 40% a year while having pretty much a zero dollar advertising budget. The idea of maximizing shareholder value being the only purpose for business just never really rang true to me. Don't get me wrong, if we can't keep the lights on, everything goes away. So it's important to focus on the first of the three bottom lines, but if that's all that you're doing, there's really, to my mind, no reason for you to exist. I love that, that bold statement. There's no reason for you to exist as a business if you're only focusing on one bottom line. So what do we have to do next? We have to love more. It's simple. But what does that actually mean? When I think about loving more, I think about starting with ourselves. What do we have to do to love ourselves more? What do we have to do to love our families more, our friends, our neighbors, our community? And in business, we have to think about loving our employees, loving our managers, loving our coworkers, loving our customers, loving the people who make up our supply chains. And then what about nature, Mother Earth? If we think about loving the rivers, loving the streams, loving the oceans, loving the forests, loving the animals, if we think intentionally with every single thing we do in business, how is this going to in fact, in impact and affect the things and the people that we love? Then we're going to create a, a whole new way of doing business, aren't we? And what we're going to do is we're going to create an economy that doesn't necessarily have to go up this way, but more this way, a little more distributed. The good news is we don't have to start from scratch. This has already been happening for decades. There is this love army of conscious capitalists and conscious consumers and entrepreneurs and students and everybody in this room that's actually been coming closer from the fringes of capitalism, coming into the middle. A lot of these folks have been hanging out and organizing in communities like the Social Venture Network, like the B Corp Network, like the Hatch Network, like SOCAP, like Sustainable Brands. These are all organizations that I've, and communities that I've actually been able to be welcomed into. And I see this new global world, this movement is well on its way. And what's been happening is the foundation for us to work on is already being built. The love economy doesn't need to grow tall. It needs to be wide and strong, supporting all. I wrote that poem literally in the car on the way up. I didn't know it was a poem until I read it. I was like, whoa, that rhymes. Good first play. Uh, <laughs> so the love economy is based on a strong foundation that is going to support a durable, shared prosperity for all. With that, I'd like to say I love all of you. Thank you for being a loving TED audience. And as they say in Hawaii, a place where actually my soul and my heart is right now, mahalo.